So if you've ever felt overwhelmed when you first open up Adobe Illustrator, you're in the right place. I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started using Adobe Illustrator, even if you're a complete beginner. Let's jump in. Now, Adobe Illustrator is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud network of apps, and they all work together with each other. If you don't yet have a subscription to that or you want to try it out for free, you can click the link that I have in the description and be able to try that out. Now, just to tell you a little bit about what Adobe Illustrator is, it is a vector-based design program, meaning that you can resize anything that you create in Illustrator to different sizes without losing quality, which is different than a pixel or photo-based editing app such as Photoshop, which uses pixels, which are little dots. So when you expand a picture, it gets grainy or loses some of the quality because it's just making the dots bigger. Vector-based or Illustrator works differently in the sense that it just looks at lines and shapes so that it can resize differently. So it's great for creating logos or graphics or illustrations that you want to put on different things or use for different purposes, things like that. Now, having said that, you could still use it to manipulate JPEGs or PNG files if you like, but that's really not what it's designed for. So when you first open up Illustrator, you'll, it'll bring you to this main page, and this should look very familiar if you've used any of the other Adobe Cloud programs. If not, it's pretty basic. We can create a new file up here. We can open an existing file, or you will see down here, any of your recent files will pop up in this area here. And then they have some little tips and some other suggestions that go on there. If anybody has saved any files for, with you, you want to learn more about it, all of that sort of thing is right in there as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new file. So we're going to click on new file up there. And then it will bring up a window like this, which is going to ask you some questions about how big you want your file to be and the orientation and all of that. They also have some different presets, whether you're doing something for mobile or for web or for print, branding, all of those sorts of things are in there. And they also have some different templates that you can start with and kind of manipulate things from there. And you could also customize it completely if you want to go for a specific size or things like that. But over here, we're just going to name this project, and I'm just going to call this Halfinity. And they have the width and the height. You could change the orientation of it. You could have margins and then your color mode. Now, I'll give you a quick tip here. If you're doing anything that's going to only exist online or in digital format, RGB is the way to go. That's the color spectrum that that uses for digital. If it's something you intend to print or have in a physical version, like a, a shirt or a coffee mug or things like that, you want to go with the CMYK color spectrum, which is specific for physical colors that you can create that way. We're just going to leave it as RGB. This is just going to be for digital purposes. And then you click on Create. Now, let's talk a little bit about this workspace here. So this is obviously your page where you'll be creating all your elements. Over here on the side, you have all the different tools, which are some are similar to, to Photoshop if you used any of that. There are some ones that are different for Illustrator. And then depending on what tool you click on, if you go to a different tool, it'll change the properties over here. So you have some adjustments. Depending on what the tool is, it'll give you some other options over here. And again, like Photoshop, you have layers. So when you're looking at the document, think of it like you're looking top down. So you have the top layer, which would be closest to you, and then the layer below that, layer below that, layer below that. And that is sort of where you can layer things on top of each other and how that works. And then you have your controls across the top to be able to save and edit your objects, inserting effects, all of those sorts of commands are right across the top. Now, again, this can seem very overwhelming because there's a lot of different tools and a lot of different functionality and a lot of options in what you're doing in this. But if you're just getting started, I'm going to talk you through some of those essential tools that are the foundation of how to create graphics within Illustrator. So like I had described is vector artwork is all about lines and shapes. So the foundation of that is creating shapes. And you can see over here on the side, you have some different preset shape tools. So like we have our rectangle. We'll start with the rectangle. So you can click on the rectangle and you can see your cursor became this little plus line looking thing. And now when we click and drag that, it'll create a rectangle. 
And then when you release your mouse button, it creates that rectangle. Now you create another rectangle, say you want to do one like that. And then you can also, if you press and hold your shift button, it'll create a square. So no matter how you move your mouse, it'll create a perfect square, both sides being equal. You also have your ellipse tool or your circle. So you can click on that same way and it'll start in the corner. You can create ovals that way, create ovals that way. And then additionally, if you hold your shift key down, it'll make a perfect circle. Now you can see as I'm creating these shapes, there's some guidelines that are popping up, these little pink lines here. So you can see over here, let's say I wanna create another rectangle in line with this rectangle above there. So again, we'll go up to the rectangle. And now when I hover my mouse over, you'll see these lines appear, a pink line aligning with that above vertical line. And now I can click and hold that and I could go all the way over until it shows me the other guideline and go, there we go. We want that. And now that's the exact same width as that above line. Likewise, you could go, oh, I want this. I want another circle. So we'll go to the ellipse tool and I want it to be right in line with that center point. So now that edge is right on that center point. And again, we could go right over to the edge of that triangle, see that pink line, boom. Now, going back over to the properties, you can see when I overlap those, these were a white fill color on top of white. They're not clear, it's not transparent. Maybe you want it transparent. So we'll go over here and you can see where it says fill. We're gonna click on that. And you have this, you could change the color of whatever you want. Let's say we wanna make a blue or you wanna make it you know, orange, whatever, or you can make it transparent. So you click that one with the line through it. Now you can see that other oval behind there because this is just the outline of it. Same way you could change the stroke. So maybe we want it to be a blue line or we want it to be a green line. Or we want it to be a pink line, whatever you want that to be. And you could also change the size of it. So maybe we want a nice big thick pink color. So these are the building blocks of creating different shapes on the screen. You can also go up here to this tool, this little arrow selection tool, and now we can move this around. You see where it was and you can put it wherever you want. So you can manipulate and move everything around your page as you need to. Now you can also change what that shape is made up of after you've created it. So we could click on this rectangle, go over here and change the fill color to tan, okay? You could change that after the fact. Then we could go, I don't want an outline. I don't want a, a stroke. So we're gonna remove that. Now it's just a, click off of it. Now it's just a solid colored shape. Now on top of moving these around, you can also change the shape. So if we click on that, you can see you have all these different anchor points and we go, maybe we wanna bring that side in. Maybe we wanna bring this down. Maybe we wanna bring, change the size of the whole thing, right? So you can rotate it. You can do anything that you want to this after it's been created, okay? You have all your options right there. So this selection tool at the very top is kind of your go-to. Once you get everything on the page, now you can manipulate it and change it how you need to. One other little trick that you could do with this is if you have the selection tool selected and you have your Alt key held down on your keyboard, you can select that and it'll duplicate it. Or if you're on a Mac, you can hold down your Option key. Now we're here, we've been using the selection tool, but right below that is the direct selection tool which the shortcut is A. Now what this does, remember Illustrator is all about vectors. It's about lines and paths and points. So the direct selection tool allows you to manipulate specific paths or points of a graphic. So while we have the direct selection tool, we'll go down here to let's say this square here. And if you, and you see when you hover over the edge, it'll click on that, it'll say path and you click on that line, now we can stretch that out, but you see everything else stays where it is, stays anchored where it is, and so you could skew the shape that way. Likewise, you could grab uh, the corner, and you could skew that up. 
and you grab this corner, you can skew that down. So now you really got some options. And then you can now change this to be however, however you want. So you can take a basic shape and make it into whatever you want. Now, again, same rules apply. You could change the fill color to this. You could change the strokes, increase the strokes and make those blue. You can do everything the same. Now you can go back up to the selection tool and move this around as a whole. You could resize it with that and it keeps all the proportions there. Now, likewise, you can also use the selection tool and select a whole group of things. And now it keeps all of the perspective together. We click on all of that and we're just gonna make that whole thing a little smaller. Now you can see I'm not holding anything down so it really could become anything you want or if you hold the shift key down, it'll keep the proportions the way you want it. Now, those are basic shapes. We could talk about a little bit more complicated shapes if you start with your pencil tool. Now back over to the properties, we're gonna get our fill color to be transparent and get our strokes to be red just for something different here. Okay, so now I can draw whatever I want here and create objects that way. Now you can see that it has created all of these little anchor points that now you can go in with your direct selection tool and make these all just adjusting them, all these little individual anchor points just like that. And you see there's another little control that comes up here so let's pull this out. You can see it has this little T-bar kind of control. That adjusts the curve. So you can see you could bring that out and adjust the curve that way and that way, right? So you could see like, I mean, you could really get nuanced with how you control this. But you can see all these points it created just with me drawing with my pencil now are able to manipulate the image however you want it to be, just like that. And then again, we could take this and go, let me fill that yellow. Let me change the stroke to gray, okay? And, and it's all adjustable with all the same tools. So we're just layering on, adding to the different options that we have in there. Now, speaking of layers, these are physically on different layers. Now, everything I've done here is in this one layer. But if you toggle this down, it'll give you all the different individual elements and paths right in there, right? And so you can click on those and move them around as, as you need to. You can also add a new layer. So let's say you add a second layer, you can color code them and name them however you want. And then as long as you have that selected, now when we create an object, they're all gonna appear in this new layer, you see now we have those three objects that we just created there. And so it really gives you a way of organizing everything, especially as the images get more complicated, it really starts adding a lot more to it. Now, once you master those basic fundamental skills, you can continue to just build on those basics to be able to design very complicated and very interesting and beautiful graphics all within Illustrator. I hope you found this helpful and I will see you in the next one.